In terms of configuration, Nuxt gives us access to a config file at the root of our application. In this config file, we can configure the whole project, but we can also actually add some modules, we can add some CSS paths, or we can add some specific configuration related to the module we add. Previously, we looked at the nux.config.ts and we've worked on the CSS paths on the modules and we added, for instance, post-CSS with a config uh, here a file. For instance, I can give you a first example. On our project right now, we've got Tailwind CSS. So basically with the module of Tailwind that I didn't use actually, what I could do is instead of having this tailwind.config.js, I could grab actually this whole object there and add it here in Tailwind CSS directly here. That's the purpose of this nux.config.ts. The idea is that when you are going to inject a module to your application, later you will add some configuration file from another library. Well, the idea is to never have this config file except the nux.config.ts, which here plays the role actually to the place of the whole configuration of your project. What I just said concerns only the modules. However, we have some other configuration that we can add to our project. So if we look at the documentation, we see that in this define nux config, which is a method provided by nux natively, we can inject this big object and in this big object, there will be the whole configuration. Okay, so when we look at it, we have a lot of options and which is interesting is that we can access this config also, this runtime config, we can access it inside our DOM by just using this inside our view. Then later we've got a lot of uh, configuration and again this app config is uh, um, available. And yeah, if we want to look uh, deeper at it, you can go on get started configuration. But for me now, what I want to do is to show you most of the options that are available actually in this configuration file. During this presentation, we are not going to pass on every uh, configuration key that you can add. It will be useless. I'm just going to talk about those that are the most useful in my opinion. Previously, we already worked on some alias and especially on the assets folder. So instead of having a, um, a very long pass that you will write by yourself with points and slash, you can use those aliases. And here you get the options that says that actually you can access through the uh, specific folder that you want with the related pass. So instead of having slash and the root deer, we would add a at, or for instance, or we would add asset slash name of the image dot png. So that's a very useful config that you can have. Then we have the app object. You have the base URL if you want to change the base URL of your application. You have the build assets deer. So basically when you build your application, you have uh, by default this uh, underscore next, okay, the folder name for the build seat assets relative to the base URL, you can change it with build assets dear. You got the CDN URL, uh, an absolute URL to serve the public folder from uh, production only. So basically here, if you would like to change, you would type directly CDN URL, blah, 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 immediately, okay. You got the head that we already saw in the course on SEO that helps you to define the SEO for the global application, which can be actually here a problem because sometimes you want to have different SEO data or metas inside every page. Keep alive, that can be disabled. Keep alive, again, it's when you want to keep alive a component with its data instead of uh, just destroying it inside your app. You got the layout transition. We didn't see the transition. However, you imagine that Irritating from view with Nux, where you can do some transition. You can turn on, on false or true your uh, layout transition. Same for the page transition. You can change the root ID. And here we see that on my div, I got underscore underscore Nux. If I want to change this ID, I can do it with the root ID. So basically, I would go there and say that for now, the root ID would be Guillaume, in, in, for instance. 
There's also the build here option that helps you to change actually the name of the build directory that you will have. So here we got .nuxt there, and this is the build of your application. It's actually what is delivering your application. There, if you want to change the name, you can type build here and it will create a folder with a new name instead of .nuxt. You got the debug option, which is clearly cool because it logs out when you got a problem or not. Um, it prints out aux names, timing on the server, logs, everything that is related to the Nuxt app. If you want to turn it off, you can go uh, on your app and just type here debug uh, false, and then you will not have the console log in your console. Then you got the dev server option. If you want to improve your um, developer experience and change, for instance, the host, the HTTP, um, the port, the URL, you can do that in the dev server object inside. You just enter those key and you change them. If you want to customize all the architecture of your project and change the name of the folder for any reason, you can use also dir. And inside dir, you can specify where you want assets to be. So change the name of assets, the name of layout, middleware, pages, plugin, public, and static. It can happen to you that you have extensions that are not resolved by Nuxt and you have to specify them inside your nuxt.config.ts. So for instance, there we've got this uh, extension array and we've got some .gs file, .gsx, .mgs, .ts, .tsx, .view. Or maybe we could have some GQL if you do some GraphQL. You would have to declare them inside your nux.config.ts. So especially there, what I would do is here, for instance, to say extensions, which will be an array and it says CSS, but actually it's not CSS. It would be like GraphQL or it would be .gql, for instance. And then my next application would resolve these uh, files with uh, this extension. Previously, we already saw the modules, so you can add a module entrance and add your modules there. You can also use the root dir option that helps you to define where is the, your Nuxt application and where Nuxt has to look at when it's building your app. If you want to work on the configuration of Vit, you can also doing it in nux.config.ts. There is a Vit entrance that uh, gives you all the access that you need, for instance, to the ES build configuration, the public directory, the resolve, the root, the server, or the option related to view. And finally, there is a big set of options to configure Webpack. Because if you are already a front-end developer, you know that with Webpack, you will have some configuration that you would do through a webpack.config.ts file. Here, of course, you can do it through next.config.ts.